Power Up Gaming, the only destination you need for retro video games, consoles, and accessories. Want access to exclusive specials? Like us on Facebook. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, we have a customer who uh, has an NES system, top, uh, just a front loader, um, who has an NES that basically the composite video actually works great, but he can't get the AV jack to work. The regular RCA jacks to actually work and actually register any video. So the first thing I'm going to do is strip it down and actually take a look at what I think it is, which is probably capacitors. Um, it's usually what it is, but uh, we're going to take a quick look at them. Uh, usually there's visual signs that there's uh, that there's problems, and uh, I think that's where the problem is, and we're going to start there. So uh, just taking the top cover off, and that's all I've done on this one so far, so we'll take a look at that. So I've just taken off the six screws from the bottom here, which is uh, here, 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 and over here. And uh, we're just going to start tearing all the screws off of this one. So NES systems, one of the easiest ones to take apart, but there is a lot of screws. Normally I'd use power tools. Uh, I usually have a power screwdriver. Um, a little harder on the NES systems because the, the power shielding is so deep. Um, normally you have to use extensions. Uh, this screwdriver I love using, it's one of my favorite screwdrivers. Uh, usually it's sitting on uh, one of my employees' desks. I only have one of these ones specifically, but uh, in this situation I'll use it. Had an injury a number of years ago where I broke my uh, scaphoid bone. It's feeling pretty good today. That's one of the main reasons why I use the power screwdriver. Yes, it does speed up the uh, process, but uh, mainly it's just not to aggravate my injury or my past injury. All the screws on the NES are exactly the same except for two. And uh, I'll show you where those two are located. It's just located on the 72-pin connector. So once we get that RF shielding off, so the two that are actually different are these silver ones. There's one here, and there's one located on the opposite side right there. Um, for this, they do need to actually come off, because those ones are actually connected to the main board here. It definitely helps to have your screwdriver magnetized in this situation. Um, what I use for magnetizing is just one of these guys. Uh, you can pick them up in Princess Auto. One side is for demagnetizing, the other side is for magnetizing. And you just run it through that a few times. Uh, just be careful with uh, things like hard drives. You will demagnetize the hard drive and uh, you can lose the information. So things like unscrewing hard drives on your computer Unless it's a solid state hard drive, you may want not want uh, that screwdriver to actually be magnetized. Uh, it does take quite a bit of magnetization to actually screw up your information, but I wouldn't want to take the risk. Take my game out. So it looks like the customer has a pretty new 72-pin connector in there. So we're just going to pull this out. So we're just going to pull off the connectors on this board, which can be a little bit of a pain. But, and then the RF shielding on the bottom. Just so we can get access to the board itself. The connector doesn't necessarily need to be pulled off at this point. We can leave it on. Um, the RF shielding just has some tabs. Easiest thing to do is just, uh, if I can find my flathead screwdriver, you can just kind of pry the sides and get that off. Don't see any residue there. The problem is that you don't really have access to the capacitors there. So the only option you have in this situation is to actually pull the capacitors. And I'm just going to pause the video for a second. Unfortunately, I just got to uh, excuse myself for a second, but uh, I'll be right back.
Okay, so on this system here, uh, this is actually revision seven. I've just I've got pictures that show me exactly where the caps are. This is one of the easiest ones, anyways. So basically, we have um, just give me an idea. All right, we have it here. So right here we have a the large 2200, which you can see right here, uh, 2200 cap, which is the main cap here. Uh, right here we have a 100 uh, ohm cap, 100 ohm cap, and a 10 ohm cap. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to pull them all and just test them. Um, I have a feeling that uh, we're going to have problems with the actual caps themselves. Um, the caps are getting old in these things, and uh, that seems to be the leading cause for these things to actually, uh, for the NES systems, to have problems. Um, so we'll take a look at that. The 2200 is actually for power. I don't suspect there's going to be a problem there, but in order to get to the other ones, we need the 2200 out. So uh, we will look at replacing that one regardless. Um, yeah, so we'll get started with that. I'm just waiting for my desoldering iron to actually take it out. To get these caps out, you can use soldering braid. It's a little harder to do that. Um, I do recommend a good desoldering gun. But uh, yeah, there is other ways to do it. Um, so, without waiting here... And I do need a new tip on this, so this isn't going to be as easy as what I would want. I'm just waiting for my new tips to come in. We'll turn this up a little bit because it is a big connection here. And we'll see how this goes. Okay, so the 2200 is out. Okay, so this should come right out now. So to get at these, it's a little harder. We're going to use a pair of pliers. I should have pulled those out first. Those pliers. So you just kind of grab them. Give them a little yank. the other guy. Okay. And just to make sure I got them all. Very hard to see sometimes, just going to use the light. Should be all of them. Yep. So they're all out there. And what we'll do is we'll just test these out. It's got a grab. So it's wrong on my measurement. It looks like we have a 100. Yeah, 100 UF. It's 100 ohms. This one's going to be a 10. This one's going to be a 10. Oh no, a 100. So I was right. So this one is a 116 volt. This is a 100 
10 volt. This will be the 10, 16 volt, and then the 220. So we'll test these and see where we actually get for a reading. So this one first off is a 10, 16 volts. And right in the range. So we're getting 9.7. That's just an audio one anyways. So this is the 100. And that one's right in the range. We're in 101. It's so not that one. So this one's sitting a little low, but uh, still within the range anyways of 10%. We're getting 91.7 uh, on that one. So still within the range. And the power, which I didn't suspect to be a problem anyways. Yeah, we're sitting at two, 219, and this is a 220. So, uh, sorry. Actually, let's do that again. Okay, sorry about that. Yeah, so 2200, and we're pretty much getting 2200. So the capacitor is not the issue. So there's something else going on with the system, and it's why it's not outputting in uh, after the audio video ports. So what we'll do is we'll put new ones in anyways, and uh, I'll go through how to put those out. But uh, I'll get them all ready here, and we'll get started on that. And uh, yeah, so these ones were not an issue. But uh, we'll get new ones in the system anyways. So I'll be back in a few minutes once I get these organized. Okay, so as far as getting them in, I've already got the 10 in only because it's an absolute pain in the ass. What I recommend is um, when you actually have them, make sure the legs are longer. The longer the legs, the better. Um, when I got my uh, 10s, I bought them actually on a tape reel. And what I tend to do is actually cut off at the tape. Um, what I recommend is if you're going to cut off at the, at the tape, um, keep some a little bit longer for this installation. Uh, the longer the legs, the better. Because if you can actually grab the legs from here and you're going to bend and curl the legs, you can actually aim it from the outside into the actual holes. In this situation, because the legs are so short, I kind of have to really grip the, um, the needle nose and angle it in and try and get it into the legs like into the holes from the inside to get into place. Um, luckily for the other ones, this is my uh, my 100. This is the, um, which one is this? The 16. Sorry, I swear my eyes are getting worse and worse and worse all the time. This is a 6 volt 100, um, which is going to be going into place. But this one here uh, doesn't need to go very far, but on this one here, when I'm actually getting it in, I can angle this from the outside, find the holes, and just getting it into place very easily from the outside. It's not an issue um, because it doesn't have to go very far. But the longer the legs, the easier it is to get it through the actual holes. And I say that and how easy it is, and then I have issues. The more light, the better. Normally I have the light above, but it tends to uh, wash out the video, so in this situation I don't have it up. And I actually have it through so you're going to pull the legs from the back side here. Once you got it through, you can just grab the legs. Make it through and bend them back out of the way. 
to hold it in place and we'll solder those in afterwards then we got the should be the 16 volt yep it's so the 116 volt now again these are a tape reel which means they're a shorter leg which is going to be a little bit of a pain in the ass but it shouldn't be too bad because it doesn't have to go that far in and there it goes so it's in place and we'll bend those legs out of the way and the last one is the 2200 Okay. So I'll get the soldering station warmed up here. And we should have solder somewhere here. Hiding. There's the soldering station warmed up. Where's the other one there? That one there, that one there. That's all of them. Okay, and then we'll get all those legs cut off here. I like to get them nice and short. Right to the base. And I'm always verifying all my solder points to make sure they all look nice. That one I'm going to get a little shorter. Perfect. Okay, so we'll test it just to make sure it actually turns on okay and everything before we continue and further diagnose. So I'm just going to stop it here while I test it and uh, we'll be back in a minute. <laughs> so, different day, different time. And uh, the NES system is not in front of me. Magic! <laughs> what we ended up doing is uh, took the NES, tested it, and systems outputting AV no problem at all. So composite video is now working on it. Um, it's a good thing. Systems repaired. So what actually happened? Uh, this system was actually owned by the customer from the beginning of time. Um, ended up getting it. It's his original system. Uh, he's never actually used the uh, composite out before. Uh, he's always used the RF. 
So RF has always worked perfectly on a system, no problem at all. Uh, system went into storage, mom and dad's house, and uh, many, many years later, pulled out the system and uh, used the RF for a while and decided that, uh, you know what, he found out that uh, you can actually hook RCA cables up to it. Started using RCA cables and had a problem. Won't we'll output uh, on the com uh, composite video. So, uh, you know, tried hooking up to a different TV, still the same problem. So he brought it to me. And uh, I tried it on our TV here, and same thing, won't output uh, to AV. So my first thought is that it's actually the capacitors. So took the capacitors out, tried the capacitors, not the capacitors. So we put in the new capacitors and thought we'd go on to the next step. Um, when we put in the replacement capacitors, the system started outputting composite, no problem at all. Um, the theory on why it's actually working is the capacitors themselves... Um, basically, the, um, the capacitors themselves, a uh, few of them are actually related to the audio video circuit itself, and the capacitors are actually extremely close. And when I was actually taking it apart, I noticed that the, the solder itself was actually very sloppy. Um, if you actually go back in the video and actually take a look, you can probably see, uh, if you actually look very, very closely, that the solder was actually very sloppy on the actual capacitors when I actually went to desolder them. Uh, what it looks like is that there was actually a solder bridge on the capacitors, and I think what was happening was uh, one of the capacitors was actually shorted out on the AV circuit, and uh, it wasn't actually outputting to the audio-video circuit uh, properly uh, for the RCA output or the composite output. And uh, putting in the new capacitors, soldering properly, uh, unbridge that connection, and actually output to the AV. That's the theory I'm going with. Uh, regardless, uh, this problem's been found. I'm not going to be digging through the uh, the problem anymore. The system is working. Customer is happy, and uh, life continues. Um, so, <laughs> success? Sure. System wasn't working. System's working now, um, and we're going to continue with it. So, uh, hopefully, that was helpful. Uh, sometimes it just kind of works out that way. Wish I had a better answer for it, but uh, life goes on. But uh, thanks for watching, and uh, hopefully that was helpful. Thanks.